Hi, I'm Suresh Venkat and here's a little bit of etymological trivia for you. The singular of the word data in the Latin root is the word datum. Data is also the name of a character in Star Wars. Manoj Singh, I'm giving random pieces of data because I don't have any actual information about big data. I'm chatting with Manoj Singh. He is the COO of Deloitte Tush Tomatsu or simply known as Deloitte. Uh, you're an expert in big data. Give us some big data numbers that will either scare us or amaze us or terrify us. Well, thanks. Uh, there are a couple of things that come to mind. Okay. Um, one of them would be if you look at the amount of information that has been generated since the dawn of civilization through 2003, so only 10 years ago, and if that was X, that amount of information is now generated every two days. So more the than dawn X. of time to 2003 is X, and now we generate it now every, two, every days. two days. Okay. So that's one. That is the mother of all exponential jumps. <laughs> The another one would be uh, all of us watch movies, so just take you to Hollywood for a second, the movie Avatar, which okay. won a lot of awards. The amount of information that was contained in generating that movie because the animations and the 3D is in petabytes and it's just enormous. And okay. if you compare to some of the Bollywood movies of the 60s and 70s, I mean it's... And just for a record, a petabyte is about a thousand gigabytes? Right. Okay, that's a petabyte. Yeah. So those okay. are just two pieces. And, you, and that comparison to Bollywood, uh, I didn't get the last uh, bit. No, that would be millions times in okay. terms of what the a amount A million of times a regular movie. Right. All right, so that's, that's what big data, that's, that's how big data can amaze you. But what can big data do, Manoj Singh, to alter the nature, the, or, or nature of the way business is conducted? Well, I believe it's a top of mind issue right now with the business leaders around the world, literally all over the world, big data. And it's all about how do you find the signal through the noise of information, okay. to use a phrase. So it's, it's about assimilating information, it's about taking structured and unstructured pieces of information, and you're getting business intelligence out of it. And there are a lot of examples. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, be able to predict a, a GE engine mounted on a Boeing 747 flying north to south, U.S. to Latin America, what's the probability of that uh, fundamentally malfunctioning over the water? You can get very close in terms of predictive capabilities. It's just one example, okay. literally hundreds of examples. All right. Now, data has always been big relative to that era. At a certain point, people thought newspapers was too much data, they thought television was too much data, then they thought telephony was too much data. Data has always been big relative to the era. Why is this era significantly different from all previous eras? Why is big data fundamentally different now? So it's a good question and the main reason for that is, you know, technology as it evolves, two things happen. The ability to process a lot of things in a compressed period of time essentially improves. And the second thing is the cost per transaction. So those are the two things in the last five or six years that have enabled that tremendously. So taking a lot of data, being able to analyze it at a cost, in a cost competitive manner and then being able to visualize and depict that those are the two things that have really and those changed. are the significant changes so the classical hierarchy is information data knowledge and wisdom so where does the role of analytics play where, where does where does analytics play a role in this in this chain analytics is an enabler to use your terminology to furthering knowledge and wisdom to further okay. to convert data that, into exactly knowledge and wisdom yeah. now one of the concerns about big data is of course its close relation to big brotherness. Now big data is collected from big numbers of people, sometimes without their knowledge, sometimes with their knowledge. Many of us experience the power of big data when we use Gmail for instance. Sure. If you write an email, you're quickly going to get an ad that's related to your email. And Google says a machine is reading your email, no human being is reading your email. But still somebody is reading my email. Consumers feel they have no, they have no control over the power of big data. Is this a big concern for the people who use big data and for, who's, for whom it is talk and trade? Yes, I would say so. I would say so. I, th I think there are a couple of things. First of all, um, we are at the beginning of something that is going to be exciting. So there's uh, quite a bit of hype. Okay. Other than in a couple of industries, financial services and consumer business, big data has really not taken off. But more specifically to your point, there is a big brother aspect to it. And, and that's why when new trends set in, proper governance is very important. Okay. And there perhaps will be a few missteps before we get it right. Okay. Uh, but there is an aspect of it. There is an aspect of uh, uh, is someone watching where you're leaving a message from yeah. or keeping track. Yeah. And those are all things that are key. And that's why proper governance is important to maintain privacy and things like that. Facebook essentially has launched, you know, a level of... Uh, awareness of sharing personal things that probably four years ago we wouldn't have done it. So society also changes and what was big brother becomes small brother I think over time 
Okay. Yes, we get used things. to it. Right. Now, the, one of the things different about the internet economy is that services like Facebook, Twitter and Google are all free. But free does not absolve them of their ethical obligations of what they can use data for. Can they use the argument that we are free and you sign in voluntarily? If you don't like it, don't sign up? Uh, that is certainly a consideration, and I think what is important is every consumer has to evaluate for himself or herself what they're doing. Okay. And I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, you're taking some chances with the evolution of technology. Okay. And, and, and uh, again, as I said earlier, governance is always a few steps behind leading change that occurs, but hopefully not much more than that. So I, I, think, I think things will be fine over time. In your view, what are the big challenges for Indian CIOs when it comes to big data? What are the things that they're seeing? What are the things that they're not seeing, perhaps? So, first of all, uh, big data represents a tremendous opportunity in India. I wouldn't know the exact numbers, but um, there will be something in the range of over 4 million jobs that will be created that are related to big data by the end of this decade. Okay, Global. that's a lot. That's Global. a lot. What percentage of it in India? A reasonable percentage, perhaps a fifth or something like that. Okay. So if you compare it to what you have today, it's a big opportunity. Okay. So I think, I think that's one thing that's positive. And for CIOs, that represents a tremendous opportunity to hire the right kind of people. Okay. I think the other thing, uh, the particular challenge in India, what I, India has a lot to offer for the growth of big data. But a challenge within India would be the quality of information mm -hmm. to be able to use that effectively. Okay. And that would be my biggest challenge to CIOs. There may be big data, it may not be all accurate uh, big data. Accurate and the quality of it and the interrelations of it, right. right. Yeah. Uh, Manoj Singh, my final question for you. Now, big data can lead to big mistakes. Small data can lead to small mistakes. Now, we have, you're saying that we're generating more in every two days that we generated for the last few thousands of years. What are some of the pitfalls and biases that can lead to big mistakes from big data? Well, uh, common sense has to always prevail, right? So it's it's like anything else. The computer helps you with a framework to be able to drive results. You have to evaluate the results and mm -hmm. see whether they make sense. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is that big data represents an analytical framework and a tool okay. to make things happen. You can't rely on the answers without massaging it with a certain level of common sense to okay. make sure that it, it applies in your culture, in your domain, okay. in your geography. And that's the most important thing. Last question, how do small businesses use big data? Uh, the what happens with technology is that now you have basically service providers in the cloud that make it much econ very economical, much okay. more economical to use big data. So you don't need massive IT infrastructure. So you don't need massive investments and things okay. like that, and that would be the way for small businesses to get in. Okay. It's a tremendous opportunity for startups today. Big data startups happen when there is an evolution of new technology, mm -hmm. and and I think uh, most of the startups start off as small enterprises that become big. All right, Manoj Singh, thank you very much for talking to us and thank you for watching.